Hi Pisces, welcome to your January 2018 reading. We are getting close to Pisces season, kind of, right? End of February, March. Um, so sorry your reading is late, my bad. It was a rough new year and it's not over yet. So let's see what's going on with Pisces for the month of January. Hmm. Let's see what's going on for you all. First card out, page of brooms. Sorry about that. So I'm still using this deck that I sort of started using last month, and it's called the Ghetto Tarot, and it's a photographic reinterpretation of the Rider Waite, and all of the images, um, all of the actors, they're all, it's all Haitian, all Haitian actors, all Haitian artists that made the props. I love this deck. It's great. It works really well for me. Um, and in this deck, they're called, uh, wands are called brooms and the swords are called machetes. So first card out, page of brooms, page of wands energy. So there is either you are wanting to communicate something to somebody else or somebody has communication that they want to bring into you. And I read this as being very good communication. I read it as being very exciting and passionate communication. I read it as um, something that maybe you've been waiting for for a while. But let's see what else surrounds it, right? Because pages are, for me, are also kind of dependent on like what are what what's surrounding them. So let's see what else is going on. Uh, I realized the other day that I'm actually surrounded by a lot of Pisces risings and a lot of Pisces moons. A lot of Leos with either a Pisces rising or Pisces moon. I wonder what that is. But because I have Pisces in my third house, whenever I meet a Pisces sun, their sun automatically hits my third house, right? And so they're, I just, I have so much fun with them. It's a very Gemini kind of energy of like wanting to have fun and party and joke around and just have fun with each other. My brother's a Pisces, so we get into that vibe with each other a lot. Um, where we both just have a really good time together. And at the same time, I can have a good time with him and with Pisces, but also there is this emotional depth and emotional connection that I can make with Pisces. So Four of Swords, I feel like you don't really want to hear it though. Like there's communication coming in with this page of brooms, but I also feel that a lot of you are like, uh-uh, next. Like a lot of you are just like, what did he say? <laughs> I didn't hear him. <laughs> I couldn't hear what he said. Like you're just like not really... You're taking, whoever this person is, you're taking a break from them, and they are definitely making a, an effort to try and speak to you, but it could also be a bunch of bullshit. Like I said, right, the pages are dependent on their clarifiers, right, if you, if, you know, if you use clarifiers like I do. Some people are, like, really against the use of clarifiers, and they need to just fucking get over it. <laughs> um, Eight of Cups. So, yeah walking away from a situation, walking away, realizing that whatever this page has to say could be really nice and can be really poetic and sound, sound very enticing, right? But at the end of the day, it's not really, it doesn't really fulfill you. It doesn't really give you what it is that you need. And you're recognizing that the same pattern. I feel, like, I feel like this is about patterns, right? This is about patterns because Pisces is the 12th house, right? Pisces rules the 12th house, right? And what is the 12th house about? The 12th house is about how we imprison ourselves mentally, psychologically, spiritually. The patterns, right, that we engage in that sort of imprison us in the same kind of playing out the same story with the same archetypes over and over and over and over and over again. But that is, is a big 12th house theme of like, how do we keep ourselves mentally and psychologically imprisoned, right? By our own doing, by our own sort of self-sabotaging, self-harming behaviors. Hmm. Right. So you're so this so I feel like this is this is a bigger recognition that this pattern and we'll figure out what the pattern is as we go along. But there's this bigger recognition that this pattern doesn't really suit me anymore. 
it's not really for me anymore and you have to walk away from it. Right? You have to walk away from it. Is Neptune still in Pisces? Of course it is. Yeah. The illusions are being lifted about a certain situation. It could be regarding a cancer. Or a Sagittarius. I feel like it's a Sagittarius. And that this chariot card, which a lot of people have been getting, a lot of signs have been getting this chariot card, but it's been showing up in with for to have different meanings, right? So I feel like this chariot card for you all in conjunction with this eight of cups card is definitely that there is no vacillating about whether or not you want to stay and kick it with this person who I believe is a Sagittarius because they're showing up as the temperance card and right underneath the page of wands, page of brooms here. That there isn't this very typical vacillating of like, well, maybe I can make it work. Maybe what they said is true. Maybe what, you know, that, that, that there is a choice to really just book it and move forward and keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. Keep it moving. Right? Or this is, you know, the recognition of the treasure within you, right? Like recognizing the treasure and the value that you hold and really standing firm and standing tall in that. And really not taking any more of the bullshit. This could represent really setting hard boundaries. For those of you who aren't walking away, it could also mean that I may not walk away from you, but things are going to be a lot different. Things are going to be a lot different. You're not going to, you're not going to walk on me. No, sir. Like this could also represent this, the hard setting of some serious emotional boundaries that you need, right? To protect yourself and to keep yourself safe. But I feel like this is, could be involving, involving a Sagittarius, right? Or a Sag energy. People keep getting the Empress too. Yeah, I feel like a lot of you are just like in a space of not, we got all majors coming up underneath here. Yep. You are being urged to really stand in your power. You are being urged with this Eight of Cups energy and the Chariot to really stand in your power. And we have the Empress here underneath the Four of Swords, or the Four of Machetes. I like Machetes, but it seems a little bit weird to say. We have the Empress underneath here, underneath the Four of Machetes. So there needs to be a lot of reflection and meditation on your value, on how you value yourself, right? Here's the Empress. Here's the Empress here. Did I show you the Eight of Cups? Yeah, I showed you the Eight of Cups. I want to show you all the pictures. So, and here's Temperance, right? Here's that Sagittarius that I feel like some of you are dealing with, or that fire sign, that Sagittarius-like person who... You know, I'm a Sag rising, so I'm very, very familiar with that energy and that sometimes the Sag energy, when it goes kind of unchecked and unkempt, can be a bit soapboxy, right? Can be a bit holier than thou. And maybe this is somebody who has the appearance, right, of this angel, who has the appearance of being somebody who, you know, is totally on a spiritual path and you know, is doing all this cool shit and goes to yoga like every fucking day of the week and like, you know, their hair is really long or whatever, you know, I don't know, whatever. I live with a lot of dirty hippies here in the small town that I live in and a lot of it's bullshit. I'm just gonna say it. Everybody's on some kind of spiritual path and they pay a monthly fee to whatever yoga studio and that's like their spiritual path, right? So, you know, you could be dealing with somebody, Sagittarius can really, can when they go on this, you know, on this holier than thou tangent that like, you know, oh my God, you ate a cheeseburger? Like you're not supposed, you know, it's like, yeah, I ate a cheeseburger and I smoked a cigarette and had a beer. Like, and you think you're better than me because of that? You know, Sagittarians can sometimes get in this 
I'm better than you because I do X, Y, and Z, even though X, Y, and Z doesn't really mean shit because I do it for show. And that that kind of energy looks for, looks for more vulnerable, looks for what appears to be weaker energies in itself, than itself. And being a water sign, right, I feel like, and I was saying this in the cancer video, that people really sleep on water energy. I'm a cancer moon. I'm hella sensitive. I'm also born on the cusp of Pisces. I'm at the last day of Aquarius is my birthday. So I'm very much also very Piscean in a lot of ways. That people sleep on that very sensitive water energy and they think, oh, because you're sensitive, you must be hella weak and I must be able to... I must be able to spin and spit you on my bullshit. What they don't know is that we'll kill you, right? Waters, especially Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, especially, well, all three of them. I was going to say especially such and such a sign, but no, all three of us, all three water signs, water moons, suns, risings, people that have a lot of water in their chart, we will get very vicious, right? Like Kurt Cobain was a Pisces. Kurt Cobain gave, you know, had this very, very sweet and innocent kind of demeanor, right? This very kind of troubled artist, you know, very sensitive, very, you know, sensitive, shy guy kind of energy. But I was watching a documentary about Nirvana, and there's one scene where they played back a voicemail that Kurt Cobain left for a journalist. And he tells a journalist in the documentary, like, I will fucking kill you if you say that shit about me or my wife again, talking about Courtney Love. And I was like, yeah, that makes total sense. He had a cancer moon. He was a Pisces with a cancer moon. And I think also maybe a water rising. I think he was a Leo rising. I'm not quite sure. But he's like, yeah, I will fucking kill you if you ever fucking say anything about me. And I'm like, yeah, duh, of course. Of course he said that. Because people sleep on that sensitivity all the time. But what they don't know is that we'll come for you if you come for us, right? And that a lot of the times people think that they can prey on that energy, right? But it's your job to surprise a motherfucker. Surprise them. Be like, no, nope. <laughs> no, nope. I actually, my energy actually trumps yours. My energy is actually stronger than yours because I'm so sensitive and because I know what it feels like to be pushed around emotionally because I'm sensitive and I would never, ever, ever do that to another human being. So that in inherently makes me stronger than you. That inherently makes me better than you, that I wouldn't try to emotionally manipulate a sensitive person. That makes you weak as fuck. How could you do that? Right? So I feel like the Eight of Cups is really urging you to stand in your power. You have the Empress and the Emperor right next to each other. I didn't even notice that till just now. Look at how, look at, they're not playing around. They're not playing around. Look at their faces. I just want you to see their faces. Uh-uh. They didn't come here to be pushed around. They came here to manifest. They came here to dominate. They came here to take what's rightfully theirs. They're not taking stuff that isn't theirs. They're taking what is theirs. They're calling in what's rightfully theirs, right? Any other messages for Pisces for January 2018? Any other messages for Pisces for January 2018? Yeah. I see you all walking away, but I feel like this three of swords energy, yeah, it hurts, right? Like it hurts when we realize that we have to walk away from something or someone. But this card's also surrounded by two very dominating energies. So where I feel like whatever, you know, the things that used to break your heart very easily no longer have that much. It's like there's this energy and this energy. And underneath it, we do see the three of swords here, right? We do see heartbreak. We do see pain. But it's not the dominating center focus focal point of your life, right? It's in the back. It's background noise. It's background noise. It's just background noise at this point. You have control over this. You actually can even decide when you want it to stop hurting. So I feel like the things that used to really break your heart are no longer breaking your heart because 
you're choosing to really step away and walk away from patterns that no longer serve you. And you're walking away from people that no longer serve you. And it hurts because it's uncomfortable. It doesn't hurt because it actually hurts because this person meant, meant anything really significant, right? In a very serious, tangible way. They probably were full of shit. But it hurts because it's uncomfortable for us to actually have to stand up for ourselves and walk away from something that doesn't work. That we're realizing we're not just walking away from the person, we're walking away from the pattern. And that's what hurts. Is the realization that, oh my God, I've been walking in, I've been, I've been walking in this path, in this pattern for God knows how long. And I need to just let it go. And it's gonna be really uncomfortable. But it's healing. The three of swords also talks of healing. Right? It's temporary. It's not, it's not a long lasting feeling. It's not even that real. It's real in the moment. Do we have any advice or guidance for Pisces? Any further advice or guidance for Pisces? Any further advice or guidance for Pisces? Mm-hmm. Shoot your shot. Eight of brooms, eight of wands. Move forward. There are ideas that you have. There's creative energy all around you. If there's somebody new out there, right, who you have your eyes set on that might be a better suit for you, talk to them. See what's up. There are great things coming in. Right? It's like beyond this eight of cups, when we, like when we, when we walk away and let go of something old that doesn't serve us, we are immediately rewarded and given things that will serve us. When we, when we turn in one eight, another one comes in, right? When we abide by the lessons of one eight, another eight shows up to give us great power because eights represent power. Right? The power and the will to walk away from the situation so that more power can come to you. Like, I feel like if you all actually listen to the lessons of this Eight of Cups and really, really actually seriously walked away from this pattern, from the situation, from the things that don't fulfill you emotionally anymore, you will immediately receive what it is that you want. Immediately. Like, the Eight of Wands, the Eight of Wands does not wait. It's like, okay, I, 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 did she walk away yet? All right, cool. Send, 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 shoot your shots. Shoot them now. Shoot them now. The second, right, that you let go, new things come in. But as long as you're holding on, none of that can happen. Can we get an outcome for Pisces for January 2017, 2018? <laughs> outcome for Pisces, January 2018. Outcome for Pisces, January 2018. Mm-hmm, honey. The world. I love it. Yeah, the world. The completion of old cycles, and as a result of completing that old, worn-out, tired, fucking nappy cycle, you get to walk into something that's hella beautiful, and that's really fulfilling, and that allows you to feel whole, right? And walking away, you actually end up walking into feeling whole, is what you really do. All right, Cancers. I mean, Pisces. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed your reading. And I love you all very much. And I will see you in February for your birthdays. And I hope you had a good new year and that it was better than mine. All right.